Hey everyone, so as requested in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your shadows and how to make them more pigmented. Really in all these looks, all that it boils down to is prep work. If you prepare your eyes beforehand, you won't have an issue with pigmentation unless just the shadow's really terrible. But I'd argue sometimes you can even make a terrible shadow look great with decent prep work. So I prepare the eyes in different ways depending on the look that I'm creating. You can use one of these steps to prep the eyes or all three together. It all boils down to the look that you're trying to achieve and I suppose how much time you have. So the first step then is foundation or concealer and set with powder. So if you don't own an eyeshadow primer, you can definitely make do without one. I mean, people did for years before primers came to the market. So I like to apply some foundation or concealer to my eyelid to conceal any discoloration or veins that I have on show so that I have a nice blank canvas to start out on with my shadows. However, now the lid is tacky to the touch from the cream product and if I applied shadow directly over the top of this, it would just crease up and smudge and the shadows wouldn't last a minute and obviously I don't want that. So what I like to do then is to make sure firstly that I've no creasing. If I do have creasing like you can see here, I'll just give the lid another little blend so that everything is seamless and then I'll take a face powder. So I like to add a dusting of this across the lids and it'll just mattify the lid area. And the powder then will be there to absorb any oils that our eyes produce and it'll just prevent them from breaking down the shadows. So powder works really well on powder so by applying our powder eyeshadow now on top of a powdered base it'll just give us a really smooth blend. Next then is primer. So generally it's a lightweight formula that is transparent when applied to the skin. A primer basically creates a barrier between the skin and your shadows and you'll always hear me mention that it's important to use one because it stops your shadows from creasing, it allows them to apply nice and smoothly and it'll help them to last all day long because it's keeping the oils that our eyes naturally produce at bay for the day. So I always coat my lids when I'm applying my foundation, being that a lot of primers are colourless. By applying the foundation to that area, I'm getting rid of any discoloration on my lids before I prime. Unlike the last step though, I apply my eyeshadow primer directly over the top of the foundation slash concealer because both the foundation and the primer are creamy products. So cream on cream, powder on powder, that's the general rule. Onto bases now. So the majority of bases are tinted. They are thicker in consistency than a primer. And generally speaking, these won't stop your shadows from creasing or stop the oils from coming through and breaking down your shadows. They're more so there to enhance the color of your shadows and to make them pop. You can get bases that are close in color to your skin tone, or you can get funky colored ones as well to match your shadows. A base isn't really necessary for everyday wear in my opinion like a primer and you can of course use the two together. You can use all these prep steps together depending on the look that you're creating. So I'll mostly use a base when I'm creating a colourful look and my base colour of choice will usually be a white base because a white base layer after my primer will really make the shadows pop. Or if I'm using a duochrome shadow, I find a dark base really emphasises these shadows your product also doesn't have to be labelled as a base to work as one. You can use cream liners or shadows like I've done in this tutorial. For the colourful look, I use the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk. And here now I'm using one of the cream shadows from Trini London. And I'm just now going to press the duochrome shade from the Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette over the top of that cream base. So what I then decided to do was just really quickly add that very same shadow into the crease. Um, just to show you, as you can see, it's an entirely different colour to the shadow on the lid. It's the exact same shadow, but it works in different ways when you use a base layer. Now that we have the prep out of the way, let's briefly talk brushes. Generally, I find the more dense the brush, the more product it'll pick up, therefore the more product it'll apply. Whereas fluffier brushes will pick up less product, making them better for blending as opposed to applying shadow. Now, as I said, generally um because i use a fluffy brush to apply and blend my shadows into the crease of the eye i'm able to get a nice and pigmented finish to the shadows because of my next tip which you always hear me harp on about and that is layering so i like to apply my shadows in light layers for a couple of reasons one i'm able to control the placement of the shadows and then two the blend it's much easier to add a few light layers of shadow and build up the color slowly than it is to apply one really heavy layer and struggle to blend it out. When it comes then to the lid area, I like to use 
Again, just for the most part, a small flat C-shaped brush. This is a dense brush. The bristles are more tightly packed than a fluffy brush, so it'll apply more shadow. And for this reason, I never really have to layer as much as I would with my shadows in the crease. So I like to use patting motions to really press the color onto the lid. If I use sweeping motions to apply it, um, it would just shear the color out. So by patting the shadow down onto the eye area, this is going to give me a nice vibrant finish to my shadows. So I've touched on prepping and the tools and the techniques of applying the shadows, but one last thing you can do is to lightly wet your powder shadows to make them pop. This can be done by simply um, picking up some of the shadow on a brush, spritzing the bristles with water, or you could use a setting spray uh, if you had one of those. So in that previous clip there, I've used the shadow dry, whereas now I'm using it wet. And generally I wet my shadows if I'm using a satin or a metallic shade to really make the shimmery particles pop even more. Shimmery shadows can be great but messy and the brilliant thing then that I find about wetting them is not only do they pack more of a punch, but because the shadow is wet you don't get as much fallout, if any at all. But then that's um, the video finished. Those are my little tips and tricks for making your shadows more pigmented. If you found them helpful, please let me know and I will catch you all in a video really soon.